What's going on, people? Another off-the-cuff rant. I had posted one of my earlier videos about the minimum wage and why it's a bad idea. And I was looking at some of the responses, and it hit me why people are saying what they're saying. When you are allowed, as granted to you by the Constitution, to, for most areas, not everything, to have your freedom of speech, your opinion, it doesn't matter if that opinion is rooted in fact or any rigorous examination of the truth. When you start a company, because people are like, yeah, minimum wage, yeah, raise it, make it higher. When you have to write those payroll checks, when you have to go through your payroll account and look at this stuff, I guarantee you, and this isn't just Republican rhetoric, that if you jack up the minimum wage in certain areas, you people are going to lose opportunity and jobs. It's out the window. And I thought and I thought and I thought, and it's like these people, most of the people who were weighing in on this commentary never had a business. They never had to pay anyone directly for money produced from their fruit of their labor. You know, you might be a VP signing checks off for a certain division, but the corporation, which was probably in existence before you even got there, is providing the money. When you have to write that check yourself, when you have to put forth that money, oh, things are totally different. Totally different different conversation, different way you look at stuff. It's just different. Different, different, different. But let's talk about the economy because many people uh, if, you, if you're not a member of the uh, my Facebook page check it out. Conversations going on about the future. Now, there's a great deal of doom and gloom and oh, bad things are going to happen. I think we're going to have a mixture. I don't think we're going to have a shit hits the fan scenario. However, I do think we will have certain economies in these United States of America, which will have shit hit the fan scenarios. We already had Detroit going bankrupt. Now, what's so important about that, in the 1950s, Detroit was the second largest economy behind the United States. So how do you go from being the, in, in, in the world at the time? In the world, because they made stuff. They built stuff. They exported stuff. It was just a thriving metropolis. So how do you go from being, at one point, the second largest economy in the world to bankruptcy? Technology, future, outsourcing, I mean, this, this stuff is just going to increase. And the thing is, we are in the infancy. I know you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, we're in the infancy of this stuff. It's just happening. But once again, many people are pretending, hoping, wishing, dreaming that it doesn't happen or it doesn't get that bad. Or it, it, it is. It is. Now, what can you do to protect yourself? Because... I don't believe we're going to have a total meltdown in the United States. I believe there will be certain economies that will be stronger. There will be certain cities that will be stronger. I mean, if you were in Texas doing, quote, the Great Recession, there was no recession. They kept building because it's a, they produce in it. Excuse me. They produce energy. So when you're producing all a maker, a creator, a builder, it doesn't provide you, you know, the, the, being bulletproof, but it does provide a thicker hide to take the licks. So, with that, you have to get into the creator mode. You have to get into building the business mode. And I've always heard, I hear these arguments. Everyone's just not cut out for entrepreneurship. Bullshit. You just don't want to do it because you can work your job. And whether you work or not, you know, we used to call it shamming in the military. You can sham and still get paid. Whereas if you have a business, you can't sham and still get paid. So many people are just not accustomed to working as hard as they would if they had their own business. That hands down is a big part of it. 
I will not be so myopic to say that's the thing, the whole deal. The biggest reason that most people do not start their own business is not talent, is not a lack of access to capital, it is low fucking self-esteem. You don't think you can do it, you don't think you deserve it, you just like, oh, oh, this is for the other people, it's not for me. And that's it. How many people, how many of you, raise your hand if you have worked for an idiot? You work for a guy or you work for a girl who owns this company and they are a fucking idiot, but they're signing your paycheck. Hello. <laughs> you played the game to win. I love her, Edwards. And it just that you have so much evidence of what you can do, what you can create. Now, one of the things that I'm doing, and there'll be more of this at the end of the video, I'm creating a local meetup group that's going to address some of this stuff. But you have to figure out something and get started. Many people are, I want to be the next Bill Gates. Good luck with that. I want to be the next uh, Zuckerberg. Good luck with that. Many people are predicating their would-be business success on venture businesses when their ideal may not fit the concept of a venture business. Venture business is something that you can scale up and get millions and millions of users really, really quickly, then later on either sell or somehow monetize the platform. That is a totally different game than building a subway or you know getting owning 10 subway franchises it's a totally different game it's a totally different mo business model but you have people who are looking at building their lemonade stand using venture business model building tactics and wonder why doesn't it work out i'm not saying you can't make it happen using some of those things because certain business principles are immutable i don't care where you are they they just don't change well except on the internet well eyeballs could be more worth more than uh real cash however if you look at the valuation of uber i don't know what it is last time i checked it was like 40 billion that's more than american and delta airlines combined <laughs> But Uber makes cash. Now, this is one of the different things. Now, Uber is a venture business model, but Uber makes cash and has made cash, had revenue from day one because of how they run the thing. So when you look at those business models and become all starry-eyed and just, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. Look at all those billions. And then that's another game because she was like well this company based upon cash infusion has a market capital valuation of 10 billion dollars yet the company has not made 500 million since it's been in its existence that is potential market cap and many of them don't do not ever materialize those projections so you got to be real real careful he's like well this company is worth blah 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 some other stuff now for the people who want to start a business, and this is one of the reasons that eBay and Amazon are so damn attractive. They have the customers, they're well known, they brand it, they do advertising, marketing, and there's all kinds of stuff. So if you could somehow take your product over there and leverage all that, it makes a lot of money. There are people making, you know, $30,000 a day on Amazon, gross sales. There's some people doing 100000 a day, gross sales on Amazon. However, you got a problem. And this is something that you, you hear from all of those folks who are doing Amazon. But if you sit down and talk to someone who started doing FBA maybe five years ago, six years ago, there's a common affliction that happens to everyone. Their margins start to deteriorate because it's a dynamic system. So if you have widget A and you're selling it for 65 bucks and you're getting it really good, really, really cheap, so you're making 22, 25 bucks per widget, that's not gonna last long because someone's gonna say, whoa, well, you know, he's happy with 25. 
I'll take $20 profit. And then someone's going, oh, fuck that. I'll take 15. Oh, fuck that. I'll take 12. Well, really, if I can sell X amount of widgets, you know, a profit margin of $2 per widget, it is sustainable. And thus, the race to the bottom. Yeehaw! Let's ride this horse to the to hell. And that's what happens. So you don't hear about the deteriorating profit margins. You don't hear about the mad repricing schemes that have to happen. You don't hear about that. You're just like, woo, I need all of this money. Every time I see an Amazon FBA screenshot, first question in my mind, what is the net profit? I'm gonna tell you something. I had a business before I got in the storage auction business. I had a business that did two, no, did 1.2 million gross sales in a year. Sure did. Contract office furniture business. Sure did. 1.2 million. Now let me tell you what happened. I had so many fuck ups that year. I had so many things go bad. It was ridiculous. After the cost of goods and the cost of fuck ups was, you know, and if you don't know, when someone installs cubicles or office furniture in your, your building, there's something that comes on that's called a punch list because sometimes installers don't put end caps on. Some Somehow uh, the wiring doesn't work or they can't plug their monitors in or the, the electrical strips. Not, I mean, there's some shit that always happens that you have to go back and fix, thus the punch list. And you do not get your final payment until that punch list is satisfied to the customer's requirements. So 1.2 million, I'm gonna keep saying that, $1.2 million gross sales in one year. So after the cost of goods, after the cost of installers, I had a major fuck up that cost me $100,000. At the end of the year, at the end of the year, my net income was $60,000. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. There was taxes. <laughs> there was taxes. <clears throat> so $1.2 million <clears throat> in sales. And I ended up with less than maybe 20 something thousand dollars in spendable income. Let me say that again. $1.2 million in sales in a calendar year and I ended up with less than $20,000 in spendable income. So when you see those big ass numbers and those nice screenshots, ask yourself, what is the net? I would have been happier with making a uh, hundred thousand in gross sales with like a nine percent profit margin. I would have been thrilled. I wouldn't have worked the 80 to 90 fucking hour weeks. I, would, I mean, seriously, it was insane. It was insane because when you are a boutique um, contract office furniture business like that, you don't have the benefit of the bigger credit lines. You don't have, there, there's just so many things that you just don't really get the benefit of. And that's why I'm always like, what is the net? I don't care if, you know, uh, X seller is doing like 1. Point million a year, 2 million, 4 million, 5 million a year. What's the cost of goods? What's the net? What's the burn rate? There's so many things. How fast is the profit margins suffering degreg degradation? What is going on? <clears throat> and that's one of the things I look at. And so if you're looking at that stuff, understand that once you really get into it, it's going to get tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher. And my point is, if you're gonna do all of that, why not put some of that energy and effort into your own thing, your own business? This is for my clients, and there there are many people because uh, there's a group of somebody who's like, you know, uh, going away from Amazon is idiocy. Do you know how many brands will not allow you to sell their shit on Amazon? Thousands. They will not do it. There's, there's certain things I look, I search for I can't find on Amazon. I have to go to their website because they know that if they allow too many people to get their product and just go bananas, that their profit margins are going to diminish overnight. So to maintain profitability, they control where their items can be bought. You buy an Apple computer, right? You buy from Best Buy, you go to the Apple store, you go online, you go on Amazon. 
roughly wherever you go, they're pretty much the same price because Apple will get rid of your ass if you start massive discounting. They will see you, fuck you, goodbye. And you, you hear this stuff, and the thing is, if you understand my history, I've, I used to read Ink Magazine when I was in high school. I have been studying business, business models for 30 fucking years. So when I hear all this stuff, Amazon, Amazon, oh, eBay, eBay, you're going to hit a ceiling. Now, as a former, and let me be clear about that, a former eBay seller that got up to a point of selling two to 4,000 items per month, I think I know a little bit about the marketplace. And it's one of the reasons I don't do it. And it's one of the reasons that I recommend to my people. And then you get people come on to the video, no Amazon, no EB Alberta. Well, we can do eBay. Where, Glenda? Where the fuck can you go and replace that traffic? Well, if you ain't selling shit, bitch, the traffic means nothing. And there's a lot of people who are not selling shit. They're barely fucking making it. And working their asses off. You know, their fingers used to be this long, now that's long, because they worked them down to the nubs. Yet, I'm still here. If you are a five year, 10 year eBay or Amazon seller, I want you to ask yourself this question. If you had taken that energy and applied it to your own thing, your own website, would you be worse off or better off? And be honest. Because I talk to a lot of these people. I'm not going to mention any names. But I talk to a lot of these people. Would you? Because when you see the $100,000 a day, that's not the norm. That's not, that's like, you know, writing. Um, I actually had to take a step back because I had an atypical event with my writing career. I was actually able to make enough money to live on. That is kind of rare. There are more people than ever making money as writers but it's not the norm and just like the mega amazon seller it's not the norm the mega ebay seller it's not the norm. just for the average person with no business experience and this is something that i see time and time again whenever i'm watching someone that just gets on uh, amazon fba and they're killing it in two or three years i always go what is the secret ingredient and i was listening to one guy then his uncle had all these connections um, I was like, that's it. Sometimes you can have a person who is brilliant, but they have no money. They have no connections. And they just can't get anywhere. Then you have someone who is stupid and uh, like, well, my uncle, yeah, you know, he's a billionaire and uh, he opened a few doors for me. That's, that's it. That's it. That's it. That, that, one, it makes, it can be so huge. I used to work for a guy whose father started the company and he didn't, I didn't know it at the time, but the way he would talk, you would think that he came out the mother's womb with the ability to sell ice to Eskimos and water the seals. And then when I finally got in the company and did a little research, talked to little people, the dude inherited a company that was 30 years old with an awesome paid ex, well known in the, I was like, you, a 30 year old corporation? You could buy a house with a 30 year old corporation. You could just like, yeah, you could buy a building. At that level, a business, it's 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 like a it's like it's it's incredible what you can do with something that old mature and well protected and i was just like you gotta be kidding me but you hear is like hey you know yeah you know i was like two years old and i was selling similac to the other kids at the daycare center yep sure was no <laughs> no no so that's one of the reasons i used to like paul harvey like what's the rest of the story so ask yourself that but i think if you have your own products and you want to do eBay and Amazon. That is a hell of a lot better than going out and buying a product. And no, you won't get the home runs and you'll go to some store. You know, I, I've experienced that. I don't know what the joy is. It's Sunday afternoon. It's 5.40, 5.58 and your item goes off at 6 and it's at 100 and it's at 200 and it's at, whoa, shit, 9.50 in the last seconds. It's exciting. It's addicting. But it's not the norm. It's just not the norm. You're better off with a predictable business model with something you can make or constantly get and sell for a certain price over and over again. That's just going to make you more money, more consistently long term and be more fucking sane. So I get that. But if you're making your own products and you're selling them there. All right. That that's to me is better. And that's something that I recommend. Now, I know there are people who are resellers. I know how you get. Oh, I got to sell some shit. I mean, it's an addiction. 
buying and flipping is an addiction and it can really run your life if you don't step back and really ask yourself what's the end goal here and that's one of the reasons that I really push people make your own shit make your own shit build your own stuff create your own stuff and sometimes when you create something uh, you have to tear it apart and that's one of the things I did I got rid of uh, one of my email lists it's like it was 5,000 people see you you know this is the last email you're gonna get from Glenn the camp I had a lot of angry emails it's like why the fuck do I have to sign up again Glenn well fuck you well prove Lord and it wasn't that the list composed of a lot of people that were looking for information that I was no longer provide so it didn't really make any sense to keep the list and keep doing what wasn't working so I, I moved on and then I moved to other things so you have to understand if you want to build a business if you want to move forward and protect yourself in this crazy economy that's only going to have be very polar you're gonna have people who are gonna do amazingly well and hopefully it'll be you and you're gonna have people who are gonna be sucking ass they're gonna have a master's degree fucking PhD they're gonna have all that stuff and they're gonna be looking to make some money some of them are gonna be taking it in the ass or sucking dick so they can buy food for their family straight up we're already there there's a lot of well-educated people who are whoring themselves out in some manner because they can't make it in the traditional sense that's just reality it's reality I put up an ad on Craigslist for an assistant I got 250 replies in the first day it was a $10 position <clears throat> ten dollars per hour ten fucking dollars per hour 250 people some of the resumes I was you know master's degree MBA and there was two PhDs on there I was like oh this is gonna be interesting and I didn't call them back but and this was some time ago but the whole deal is what I'm telling you is you have to be able to get over your low self-esteem and create something now for those of you who are at the end of the video I have a local meetup group disruptive business tactics uh, I had another one didn't like the rest that was going in so I got rid of that one and changed this one now what I'm going to do with disruptive business tactics you're gonna love this if you show up I'm going to train you for free Ooh. well actually it's not free you got to get in your car you got to spend gas money and you got to show up and you got to pay attention so those are costs it may not be out of your wallet here's my credit card here's some cash costs but those are costs nothing in life is free and I'm going to have sessions an hour and a half hour hour and a half and I'm going to train you how to do X, Y, and Z. Now, if you fucking can't make it, I'm going to charge you for the training. I'm going to say this two or three times because people get confused. If you show up, training is free. I give you the magic jelly beans, the full Monty. I even have seals and uh, penguins doing tricks. You get all that. If you don't show up, if you can't make it, you have to buy the paid training. Once again, you show up, you get in. It's free. You don't show up, you have to buy the paid training. Now, I know I'm seeing overly redundant when I'm doing this because I'm going to have someone who's going to listen to this and I can't make it and like, hey, can I get it for free? And I'm going to be like, fuck you. No, no. These are the tactics. Now, I have a nice, wonderful facility. It's a nice meeting. Holds about 35 people. So, first come, first serve. That's another element. <laughs> that's another element. Says so I'm paying for this meeting spot. So that's how that's going to work. And this is the first class is going to be what kind of getting started. Uh, no, how to start a business in 30 days. What kind of business? You know, addressing this. What the hell do I do? What do I do? And I'll break down venture business. I'll break down lifestyle business. I have a lifestyle business. And I'll break down physical businesses. I know it's because many people are trying to apply physical business tactics to a venture business, and it just doesn't work. Many people go, oh, the internet's, you know, levels of playing field. No, the fuck it doesn't. The internet's a brand new fucking playing field. And I see people who do well in the physical world, and this is why I came up with these this premise. And then they come online, and they can't, they just can't make it work. So understand, <laughs> it's a different business model. It's a different playing field. So we're going to discuss all of that stuff. So that's the deal. Uh, for those of you who are here, I'm going to make you a special offer. And this is right off the top of my dome. Uh, what I'm going to do is offer the people who get to the end of the video who know they can't make it but want the training 
500 bucks year access so whatever meetup i have you didn't make it 500 bucks i'll send you a link after the meetup you get the information if you're in the hustler mindset project you get it you don't have to worry about it you're already set up you're, you're fine you're good you're good and i'll put a link there if you want to join the hustler mindset project so that's it hopefully i was clear enough that you got it all right this is glennon i'll see you on the good side